and um, the letter to the Public Service Commission through the clerk of the National Assembly uh, by volume 8, uh, 8A, page 1, gives a different person by the name Maka Juliana Jahenda. Why do we have different names here? You need to clarify because it has a different person altogether. Two different people altogether. Second clarification is on the issue of the award of the tender on the proposed refurbishment of the DP's residence in Karen. Honorable Mutuse, the government, through the uh, State House controller, signed that contract, wanted to know what is the relationship of this contract with the DP. Now that you're saying it has some issues, why, what, what's all about the contract and the, 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 the company that did that refurbishment? We need to know what is the relationship and what is, or how, what is the malpractice that has Senator Amida Kibwan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, sorry, my question was for Dr. Mulua. Senator Wakili Sige. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've got two questions. One to the Council for the Deputy President, and the other one, actually both, uh, for clarification by the Council for the Deputy President. Um, yesterday, in the course of your cross-examination, you took us to page 410 of volume three. This is with regard to the accusation where His Excellency the Deputy President uh, divulged or accused the national intelligence uh, of uh, what you say. Now, my clarification from you, which I desire, is at that page 410, the evidence which you sought to juxtapose what the President did and what the Deputy President was accused of having done is with regards to one being in office and another one alleging that he's not been able to attend sessions where that complaint came from. Give us the correlation of the two. And secondly, I share the sentiments by all the senators who've sought to get from you an understanding about the coalition agreements. You attempted to explain yesterday the relationship between company shares and coalition agreement shares. You were asked about the place of this in terms of the regimes of the two kinds of agreements. What do you say as regards shares in a company registered under the Companies Act vis-a-vis post-election coalition agreements registered under the Political Parties Act and the governance of Senator Batuli Betty Montet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to ask uh, Honorable Mutuse, uh, is there a minimum age of uh, a client in a bank to get a loan of 700 million? Senator Essi Okenyuri. Uh, sorry, Mr. Speaker, my question, I'm awaiting Dr. Andrew Mulwa. Senator Chariot Aron. Mike. Uh, two quick questions to uh, you, Mutusa. Is there any crime? that a Kenyan will have committed 
if they have 20, 30, or even 40 companies, because I see you have listed 22 companies here, is there any crime by just owning uh, these companies you feel that the person you accuse has committed? Second, on this issue of uh, Vipingo Beach, surely, uh, Honorable Mutuse, what is the crime of the sons of the deputy president being listed as directors? Because I have tried combing through your motion to establish what you consider to be either an illegality or a crime on their part by simply being listed as directors. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, is to the counsel for the DP, um, uh, Wakili Masharia. The clips of the then DP Ruto played by your team, could we read it to mean that it's an admission on your part that you're saying, if it was done then by a sitting deputy president, please allow the current one to commit the same uh, at this uh, point. And lastly, the 30% allocation to Ford Kenya uh, in the coalition agreement in ANC, how has it been realized? Senator Margaret Kamar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. I have one small question for Honorable Mluse, and that is on the witness, uh, uh, somebody who, by the name Peterson Jomo Mushira, who wrote an avid an affidavit, Uswan affidavit, that touches on Olive Garden Hotel. He, has, he offered himself to appear and, pre, and be cross-examined on the content of his affidavit. Was he invited? Senator Kathuri Murungi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, mine are just very strict uh, clarifications. Uh, number one goes to Honorable Mutuse. Honorable Mutuse, in uh, Ground 7, you have seen that uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President, has inexplicably amassed a humongous, you know, these are very strong ones, property portfolio estimated at 5.2 billion. So my question is, uh, uh, this is within two years. I know for a fact that before an election, any eligible candidate clears himself or well herself with the IBC before contesting. Therefore, for comparative analysis, do you have His Excellency, the Deputy President's uh, uh, property or worth? during the 2022, before the 2022 elections, so that now we can be able, as a jury, can be able to compare and see whether for two years, for sure, he has been able to amass this wealth. Number two, there is this property in Meru. Uh, many Meru uh, guys have called me to the last night asking me whether there is evidence to show that this land is in, uh, in Meru. The last one is with, to the councils of the deputy president. Uh, there was a clip which was played here yesterday when the deputy president made a press conference in Mombasa, immediately after the president did this in Nairobi, two different cities. Therefore, I did not get clarity from the councils about this, uh, the, the question or the clip. So I was really requesting either one of them could be able to expound on that co controversy between the two pressers in two different cities by the two, the principal and the deputy principal of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you. Senator Okoit Omtata. Okay, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I have a uh, question for the Honorable Mutuse. Uh, to, whose, to whom does this motion belong? Because in most of your answers, you keep on saying we. I think Honorable Senator Mtata, that question was uh, asked by the Honorable Enoch Wamboa, Senator. 
and okay. it was responded to. So just uh, ask for a different uh, clarification. Okay, and uh, other than that, I wanted to ask whether Honorable Mutuze knows the difference between an impeachment motion and a censor motion. And if he does, where does he place his motion? Is it a censor motion or is it an impeachment motion? And what are the thresholds for each of those two motions? If he understands the difference. Thank you. Senator Chut. Thank you, Sana, Mwishimuwa Speaker, Mwishimuwa Mutuse, ulileta ushaidi hapa ambeli ya Senate, ukidai ya kuwa, Deputy President, hakuwa na 5.2 billion, <coughs> weni wakili, na vile unaongea jana, unaonekana wakili kwa wakili shupavu, ulileta ushaidi gani hapa, ya kuonyesha valuation, ya hii property, ya hiyo, ya hiyo, katika documents yako, kwenyesha imifika 5.2 billion. Swali ya pili, ulileta mashtaka kumi na moja. Vile unasimama huko leo, unaona ibu kidogo kwa mba ulilete porojo mingi na mambo mingi kama ukiwa wakili ujafikiria bizuri. Sabu watu ya marse bedo naniuliza, hiyo mutu kweli ni wakili, ama ni mtu amekombolewa kutoka huko ebu jibu hiyo swali tafadhali Senator Beth Siengo No honorable senators we are going to conduct ourselves in decorum we are not in any way going to demean the witnesses ask your question but stick to the rules of this house Senator Beth Siengo Thank you Mr Speaker for giving me this chance I have two questions. One for um, Honorable Mutuse. Uh, in your presentation, I heard that um, you touched on the in inheritance and property of the late Neritu Chagua. Have you reached out to the widow and the children of the late Gachagua to also give you facts? The next question is uh, to the Council for the DP. Yesterday you played a clip of the president speaking in Muranga. What was the purpose of playing that clip? And how does it relate to the saying popularly now used by Kenyans, Kufa Dereva, Kufa Makanga? Thank you. Senator Chimera. On the, I would wish to seek clarity on the documents that they tabled uh, yesterday being the coalition agreement, which basically informed uh, the basis as to which the DP has been talking about shares. I just want to know whether there is any document that secures shares in respect of the region where the DP comes from. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, if the council is aware that his client, at the time those documents were being prepared, he was a candidate for office, and now he successfully became DP, and that he needs to promote national unity, and if it is still in order for him to continue championing for the interest of one region as against the entire nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Richard Onyong. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My questions are two, and I would like to ask uh, Honorable Mutuse. I hold you highly. I don't think that you're as idiotic as my co our colleagues will say. I want to ask you, between the time when the Deputy President was a member of Parliament and the time when he became the Deputy President, were you able to see whether there was a deliberate uh, variation in the amounts of money that he was handling. Did you see whether the money that he was handling as a member of parliament, for example, uh, changed then to the money that you brought in where you are saying that there is some money laundering taking place? Uh, were you able 
or are you able to show that distinction in order for you to make your case? The second question I wanted to ask you again on the same, same issue. When you are trying to find out whether there is money laundering on any transaction, and I know chances are you did not have the technical expertise and maybe an investigative agency to help you. But did you, by any chance, find out money moving from anywhere, either through His Excellency the Deputy President's private accounts, or any money that was being borrowed? Because I know that one property you've mentioned that it was a loan, but all these other properties that you allege that the Deputy President had purchased, did you link that from money coming from some place or money coming from some illicit, like you say, because I don't see that evidence uh, on the table. And finally, I want to ask you again, uh, Mr. Speaker, that uh, if you look at the issue of the will of Mr. Gachagua, uh, that is the former governor, did you by any chance get a, 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 a way to ask either through the wife, the children, whether there was a meeting that took place where they were involved or whether they were unhappy or happy with the transactions which were taking place because there isn't any evidence whatsoever of, for example, the wife complaining or the children complaining. Did you get anything like that which is substantive? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Matinda. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My two questions goes to you, Ms. Uh, Honorable Mutuse. First, in regards to this company by the name Crystal Kenya Limited, Ground 7, dating of incorporation.